everybody. Um, thanks for all turning up uh, very early on a Friday morning. As Bren said, uh, they gave me the dubious task of being the first speaker, which um, frankly scares the shit out of me. Um, but I, I'm here, I made it, which is a good start. Um, so I'd like to say thanks to you guys and screw the guys at Offset for making me do this. But um, I mean, ultimately I'm really excited because you know, in about 40 minutes time, I'll have finished my piece and I'll be able to enjoy what I think is gonna be an amazing weekend. Uh, it's gonna give such kind of focus to um, kind of the world of creativity in Ireland. It's genuinely exciting. Um, and this is what we're here to kind of talk about and see and, and kind of discuss this weekend. It's creativity. Um, and I think, you know, what when I was sitting down to kind of prepare this, and I was thinking about what do I want to get this weekend? And maybe to try and put some of that into my talk. And I was thinking what I really want to get is I want to get a sense of, of um, where the creative industry is at internationally and in Ireland. And I want to get some insight into, you know, these people that I really love and respect their work and how they do what they do and how they kind of manage to do it in their, on their own terms or, or maybe get some insight into how they, they kind of work with clients to make it better or, or stuff like that. So this is, this is what we're here to talk about. Um, what, when I was sitting down to kind of prepare this, um, which I found difficult anyway, uh, as I said, I think if I'd been talking at a different time, I might have found it a bit easier, but I felt a kind of bit of responsibility to kind of kick things off. Um, and I'm not a big fan of just kind of showing a portfolio of work anyway and kind of, oh, we did this, blah, blah, blah. I kind of like, Things like this, I like to see ideas. I like to see the thinking and the stories behind things. I like to see where people's heads are at and, and, and what motivates them and, and mobilizes them. So, I mean, that's kind of where, where I was coming from. Um, but when I sat down to kind of start putting it together, I kind of realized there was nothing that I'd done this year that really kind of I really wanted to talk about in terms of work. Um, it's been one of those years for everybody, I think. And, you know, we might as well get out in the open now. It's the big white elephant in the room. Um, but I think what really was the defining, um, the defining point for me in the last year was it was very much been a journey for me. And in a lot of ways, um, in a more unexpected way, it wasn't just the recession that was the big player in it, uh, although it did kind of facilitate it. I guess the start of the story, uh, October 08, I sent this email to to a group of good friends, Richard from Offset included, called Design Meltdown, um, which I was, uh, which I was kind of uh, experiencing. And it was there's a line here. I think if I see Helvetica foil blocked once more, I might throw in the towel. Um, that was one of the things. It was kind of two things that were wrecking my head. One was this kind of explosion of design inspiration sites um, that just regurgitated the same stuff over and over again. Modernism redone, foil blocked. Modernism redone, foil blocked. Um, so that side, it just seemed like design was kind of eating itself whole and it kind of made me wonder, is that what creativity is? And then the other side was a professional thing and it was these kind of international brand conglomerates. We pitched, done a couple of pitches throughout the year and you know, we'd been told, look, your thinking was, was great, but these guys could tell us how successful their implementation would be because they were gonna bring it out and they were gonna kind of do all these things. And it was like, how do we compete with this? You know, these kind of brand persuasionists where graphic design is actually a very small and ideas are a very small fraction and the big part of it is, is kind of facilitating people and kind of going through these processes. So in October way, I had a design meltdown. Um, I sent this email to some friends and that was, you know, that's a slightly different story. It ended up, we formed a collaboration called Beer Vetica where we go and we drink beers and we, and we get all our gripes out and it's great. So that was good, but that started, that was the start of, of the story. The end is actually being right here right now because actually in preparing this, I think I got a lot of things straight in my head and, and, and kind of got back on track. But um, it kind of tied into something else I've read a couple of things about, which is this idea of seven year cycles in creativity. I've read a couple of people talking about it. The, the kind of most famous one is Stefan Sagmeister who for every seven years he works takes a year off. Um, but I have heard other people talking about it and 
you know, oh, it might be a bit oh, like, oh, here he is, crazy psycho guy. He's a Gemini, and he believes in seven-year cycles. But when I actually, tra when I actually tracked um, my seven-year cycles, and I have a fancy laser pointer, um, 14 years ago, I finished art school. That was, and to be honest, what I experienced this year, the kind of sense of feeling quite rudderless creatively and kind of lacking inspiration, the last time I felt like that was 14 years ago. Spooky. Um, seven years after that, seven years ago, was a big change in my life. I, I'd been working for a couple of different design agencies, um, and I left the, the one I was working at, a place called Image Now, a really great agency, but it, they were doing a, we were doing a lot more corporate work, um, and I just kind of felt disillusioned again, and I, I left and I started up um, a company, a clothing company called Angry. Um, and I guess that's where we'll kind of start the story and give it a bit more context. So I'm sure a lot of you might know about this. This is Angry. I love this laser. It's great. Um, this is Angry. This is um, me and my business partner left. We'd met in Image Now. We left Image Now. We just kind of wanted to do something great, make our mark on things, uh, wanted to kind of put something out there that we believed was, was, was great. It didn't have to be kind of just following the, the, like what everybody else was doing. So, um, and we didn't want to just do like a self-initiated project, make a post or send it out. We wanted, we wanted a kind of a bigger picture to do it. So we started a clothing label. Um, it started very small. We just printed. I'm sure a lot of you have heard this story before, so I don't want to go into it too much. If any of you haven't and are interested, feel free to stop me and I can talk you through more. But, um, but like it's been, as I said, it's seven years old. A lot of people who are here will, will know the kind of story. But in general, it was an amazing experience, lots of stories. We kind of built it from small, very small, into a kind of international brand. It was selling in Tokyo, it was selling in Paris, uh, in Berlin. Um, as a body of work, I mean, it really is second to none. You know, over 200 t-shirt designs, clothing designs, jackets, shirts, patterns, actual printed fabric, notebooks, uh, promotional items, uh, postcards, swing tags, I mean, the list goes on. I mean, it's a, it's a really great body of work. Um, but it turned out that we were really crap in the fashion industry. Uh, we had no idea how the business worked. We never made a penny. It actually just kept costing us. So, you know, eventually that wound down. But I guess the ambition when we were leaving Image Now um, was pure creativity. That's what we wanted to do. We wanted to get out there, kind of make something, put it into the world and make our mark. Um, so for the seven years that we left Image Now, we did lots of kind of, we started off doing lots of really creative projects that had less money, which a lot of people when they leave their first jobs do. Um, flyers for clubs. Um, we worked with Bell X1 doing their, doing their music packaging again, which was at that time, it, it's kind of, it's, it's gone even more back to DIY, but at that time there was still a bit of budget. Uh, they were signed to Island Records, so you, you know, you could, you could hire a photographer, you could kind of, really make ideas look bigger. Um, so there was still money to kind of be small and creative. Um, theater companies, this is uh, Corn Exchange, who we've had, been a really great client over the last seven years. Um, and in some ways, you know, are, 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 are somebody that I look to to stabilize. What, they're, what they go through seems to be the same as what I go through in terms of trying to get my head around where we're going and, and, and how to apply creativity. Um, and more kind of, um, um, posters for clubs and stuff. So high level of, of creativity at that stage, maybe, you know, we weren't kind of necessarily turning over money to employ anybody or anything, but, um, you know, it was very much about stamping our creativity in the map. At a certain stage, um, bigger clients, this is for Paddy Whiskey, bigger clients started to kind of notice and started to come to us and kind of, ask us to do one-off projects, a t-shirt. Usually, it was around a t-shirt. A lot of people have had, had heard of Angry, it got a lot of press. So usually, it was a t-shirt. We still get calls today asking us if we're the t-shirt guys. We've been trying to um, bury Angry really deep for a long time now, because we're not the t-shirt guys. <laughs> um, but, um, so stuff like this would come out, would work. we started making money on stuff like this, and it, it, was, it was kind of exciting. But, um, you know, Sometimes we weren't really sure what exactly it was that we were doing for these guys, apart from maybe just coming up with some quirky ideas. Started to maybe feel a bit like we were 
selling ideas in that way was we were creating gimmicks, which we weren't maybe very comfortable with. But again, you were like, okay, well, it's about making money. So this was the, you know, the seven years that's preceded was, was about rushing into the world with this kind of desire just to be creative and kind of make your mark. Um, and then along the way, kind of getting caught up in money and trying to establish what you, your business principles are. Um, and kind of getting to a stage this year that with the, you know, the, 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 with the state of things this year, obviously for the first time, like we'd been lucky in that we'd always kind of been busy and we'd managed to kind of grow. We didn't want to grow too big. But for the first time this year, we had to kind of go out and meet people and kind of think about it like a business and, and, um, and sell ourselves. <clears throat> and, you know, that's a big part of why, why all this happened in that I started thinking about those things I talked about at the start and like, and then halfway through the year, the year, we were in a meeting with a, a brand manager for one of the big, big Irish booze companies. And we were like, hi, uh, we're such and such, we're from a, we are a design agency. And he said, so are you below the line? And I was like, we're a design agency. <laughs> and he was confused and he said, so like, below the line? And, um, and this was a real, this was really the kind of pinnacle of, of my confusion by the whole thing. And it, the question that left was, does graphic design not exist anymore? I mean, are we destined to be a below the line agency or a branding agency? Um, what happened to good old graphic design? Is it just, is it gone in a commercial, uh, a commercial environment? Does it not exist? Does it not have any value? Um, have designers just kind of filtered off into this, into this inspiration site area where they kind of make nice things now and again as graphic designers and then go back to their day jobs as brand managers. Um, is that how it's going to be from now on? And it really threw me and really kind of, you know, started my kind of thinking about it. Um, I started looking into work that we've done recently uh, in the last kind of couple of years where I guess we had started to kind of Stabilize. And again, it wasn't the money, the, the kind of big, we would like to buy a kind of idea from you to promote our thing. There wasn't much money in it, but we made sure we always got paid. So sometimes it was for arts, sometimes it was for, for smaller companies. Um, but I started looking at this work and, and, and looking at it and saying, I think this is graphic design. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, what makes it graphic design? What did we do in this? What, what can we tell people that we do to make them go, ah, graphic design, of course, come on in. Um, so um, we looked at, this was a project we did for a company called Tala Community Arts. They're a small community arts uh, company. The, 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 the clue is in the name, and they're based in Tala. Um, we worked with them on, a, on an identity. And we've, you know, from the, even with Angry, the whole point of Angry in a lot of ways was we've been doing a lot of branding at Image Now. Um, and we had a lot of ideas of, you know, the classic logo, color palette, fonts, logo, color palette, fonts. And we were like, surely that's an identity is much more of a kind of organic, real life thing. So, you know, one of the reasons we started Angry was to apply those thoughts. But Angry kind of became a, a laboratory for creativity um, where there wasn't even a logo. Like, there was a 30 logos. Every time we did something, there was a new logo. Um, so we kind of lost the run of ourselves. But with something like this, um, Tala Community Arts, what we did for them, I mean, it's not just designing a logo for somebody that kind of represents who they are. How we th thought about it was, this should be something that they can use every day. This should be something that helps facilitate and, and, and develop people's understanding. So the, the, the actual logo was, was this um, grid of dots that forms a T. And the idea is that Tala Community Arts, they're not per se, they don't produce art themselves. They facilitate it, they create a platform for people of all different standards and levels in the community to come in and create art. So that, was brought, that idea was brought to life with this grid of dots. It's basically just a canvas for people to do whatever they want on. So the idea was we created a suite of these dots, but then we were giving them the tea and saying, you guys should go out now, you should, do, you should get people in, you should get kids in to draw and trace on the tea and do all this stuff. And it becomes actually part of the culture of Tala Community Arts. Um, and there was a bit of a, when we showed them this, we showed them some other things, but we were like, this is, this makes sense. And they were like, oh, 
I don't know, when they were really mixed and we really had to sell it. It wasn't one of those situations where they just got it. We really had to sell it. And, um, but when they started to get it, I think some of them just thought of a logo still as, like, so this goes on our letterhead. Yes, it goes on their letterhead, but it's also something, a tool you can use to help people understand and to help you guys kind of uh, push yourself out into the community. Once they got it, they were, they were totally enthused and it really brought what they do to life for them. So, so I looked at that project and I went, there was, we did something there that was good. What was it? Um, it was a Dublin Dance Festival. Um, again, we, we, with a lot of small uh, arts organizations, they tend to be very good at communicating to people, but not necessarily very good at, um, at creating consistency or, or branding. Um, and a lot of it is they think, that, again, that branding is, they think of, it, it's about repetition in the kind of, in, in the basest way. Um, so with Dublin Dance Festival, and this was something else that was kind of playing in my mind this year, uh, a lot of design rhetoric around the, the idea of, um, oh, you simply must stand by your guns and you must know what you're doing from the offset. And, and you go out and you have one logo and you tell the client, this is the logo. And here it is. And I was going, I don't design like that. I do 40 logos and I kind of work through it and I really have to explore. And am I, do, am I getting that wrong? Have I? So it was one of those, it was a bad year for me. Um, so this was, like we, we presented this to the client. We showed them however many logos there are. There are 12, 15. Um, which, you know, people, a lot of our peers would say, you, d you don't do that. Um, but the point of it was that we showed them this, the application. We said, here's 15 logos. So, like, we really looked at this for you guys because we wanted to be right. We looked at what, the, what, the, what, what we wanted to do for Dublin Dan Dance Festival was give them something that was really solid and consistent and didn't move, but allow everything else around it to move to kind of free up the sense that they didn't have to just use a photograph over and over again to kind of, this is the Dumb Dance Festival, the same photographs and everything, because that doesn't really give the idea of a festival, it gives the idea of, a, of one show. Um, so and, uh, to be able to do that, you have to have something really strong and consistent. So the D, um, the D out of all those, positioned in the same place every time, just gives this really strong, stable sense of, of an organization. As soon as they saw this, all of them, all of the people in the room pointed. We had several different other posters up with different uh, versions, different logos. And they all pointed at this and said, that's it. And I said, I think so too. Like, it's the one that absolutely, you know, we've gone through this process. I think everybody's on the same page. So, so that was great. Um, and then, you know, we've, do, we've been doing it for a couple of years now. And it's, it's getting stronger, which is great as well, because a, a lot of the time, we see people going, doing big rebranding projects and they get delivered the guidelines and they think this is it now. And it's actually only the beginning because it hasn't been used and teased out and nobody really knows the, the, the problems that they're gonna face and, and making sure that the communication's good and, 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 and people uh, uh, really get into it. Um, but anyway, so I think it's progressing well. The D is always in the same place, Letterhead's website. Um, so it's great because I don't have to think about it. The D is there. It, 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 it um, frees me up. And then the idea is that we use lots of different images in all the different applications. So the website has different images rotating. Um, every different piece of collateral has different images. Every press ad is a different image from the show so that if somebody's interested and they go, oh, the Dublin Dance Festival's on, as they start to see the different elements, they get the sense of something organic and, and movement and, and, and a festival rather than one show. Um, so. And even when we're doing something purely typographic, the D still works very well. So again, we looked at this and we said, this is good. This, they, they all, like, there's something here. It's working for them. It's helping them. That's surely the right thing, to, to, to help somebody or something. There was, so we started to kind of see that there was definitely something in graphic design. There was life in the old girl yet. Um, this is a project that we did for a, for a cafe on Camden Street called Green 19. Um, that you should all go and check out. It just won the Dubliner um, Best Restaurant or something, which is great for them. And they're great. And I, I knew it was a friend of mine who worked for the guy who owns it, and he got us involved. And the, the guy was really passionate, and I love working with people like that. But he was willing to kind of bring somebody else in who knew something about what we did. He, he didn't just want to kind of force us to do what he wanted to do. So 
there was a real kind of uh, symbiotic relationship that formed. And his thing was, I love Camden Street, I love it. I love the energy of it, I love the spirit of it, and I want to fit in on Camden Street, but I also want to stand out. And we thought, that's great. So we started there and we kind of went around. Camden Street's a real old kind of almost working class area, but it's kind of starting to mix up. You've got ladies who kind of are there selling fruit and veg from their stalls, and you've got lots of kind of old fashioned pubs, and then you've got kind of newer kind of coffee shops and stuff opening. So um, we developed this like kind of ident identity system for them, and also we kind of looked at very specific needs that they had. One, they're a start of business. They don't, you know, we want to give them as much, as much materials that they can use to, pr to promote this place for as little money. So once we designed the kind of identity and we designed a, a set of icons that helped them kind of, you know, when they're like, you know, when somebody's starting a restaurant, the, the funny thing about it is from day one, the place was, was rammed. But they were like, oh, well, people know that we're a restaurant. So it was like, well, we can develop, we can, we can have a little icon for each thing that you think is important. So there was cocktails, coffees, drinks, sandwiches, croissants, um, art, which was another part of the thing that they wanted. Um, but then it kind of started to, like, when we, they said we need, uh, we need menus and we need drinks menus and we need po uh, post promotional postcards maybe and we need all this stuff. So again, we kind of, we said, okay, well, let's, we don't want to kind of get in a situation where they're coming back to us every couple of weeks going, oh, we need a new menu. That one got busted or uh, it's out of date and we need to change because they were very much into seasonal ingredients. Um, so it was like, okay, so this is a real uh, system that we need to build and we need to kind of, with the, with the least amount of materials and, 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 and investment from them, provide the most amount of possibility to kind of answer all these things. So we produced one element for them, which was a um, very heavy uh, book board, which is just the kind of rough board that are usually inside uh, um, uh, canvas coated books or whatever. And we foil blocked it, and that was this kind of mixture of the kind of roughness of the area with the kind of modernness of, of what they were doing. Um, and then that was cut up into lots of different ways. So you can see... Um, with the, if I point with my laser, if it's sliced down there, you get the menu board, and you get the drinks menu. If it's sliced that way, you get a long postcard. If it's sliced, oh, I can't remember, but there was like seven or eight slices, and it gave lots of different options, so they'd have different things that they could use. Um, they were gonna have exhibitions, so there was, there was things that were gonna be on the wall that would hold the little titles for the different prints. Um, so we really kind of put a lot of thought into trying to make sure they got the most out of the least. Um, and then, um, again, because they were going to be constantly changing the menus, you know, it was just held with a little bulldog clip and an elastic band at the bottom. We gave them a template so that they didn't have to keep coming back to us and keep adding on the cost. Um, we designed a, a font as well um, for them, which is a kind of very squared edge uh, font. And then the identity kind of organically came to life as this uh, bookboard foil blocked with rubber stamps for, for um, messages that they need to update, bulldog clip, and an elastic band. Um, so everything has that feel, um, but it kind of was an identity that happened by trying to be economical. Um, but what was really interesting about this project, and in a lot of ways, what really kind of rammed home that graphic design is okay, is as we, we were working on it, and we got a real sense for what they wanted to achieve, and it was this idea of, um, it was all really good, solid food, um, but done kind of modernly. They were going to smoke their own pastrami in house. Like it was real care about the whole thing, but the the experience was a no fuss experience. But it was it was food with an edge. So when they gave us the menu, um, and they didn't have any prices. They were still developing the menu, and they said, "Would you just start to lay it out so we get a feel for how it's going to be?" So as we started to lay it out, we actually started putting prices ourselves. And it was one of those things where it would be great. Like, I hate when it's $2.99 or $2.69 for a coffee or something really annoying like that. And it doesn't really suit what they do. So we made all the prices, 4 euro, 5 euro, 10 euro for the mains. Um, we put in a glass of tap water, 0 euro. Because a lot of time people would just be like, oh, are they going to charge me for the tap water? You never know in Dublin anymore. Um, so we did this and we kind of we brought it to them and we said, look, we just put this in just because this would be nice. And... They loved it. They were like, that's exactly it. And they said, it's, like, it's not an idea they would have ever come up with, but it's, 
it makes sense of everything that we're trying to do. It's just no fuss. And like the cost of something actually is the thing that puts that message into somebody's head more than the identity does. It's just, yes, okay, it's a tenor. These guys aren't messing around and it's good food. And I really think that helped kind of set them on the road to where, where they've got to because people really appreciate that. They go up, everybody talks about the fact that everything's just a tenor. There's no nine, it's not 9.99, which is just really annoying. Um, so, so that was great. It kind of really made me go, okay, okay, I think graphic design's okay. I think I don't have to be a marketing person, which is great. I think I don't have to be, um, don't have to be, I, we don't have to become a branding agency um, because, you know, I'm not too interested in that. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just wouldn't be our cup of tea. Um, so I think that it made me feel that there's still life in graphic design. Um, and the thing that when I was trying to work out what it was about those projects, it's, it's problem solving. I mean, that is the thing that differs. I mean, art director, you can be an art director, you don't have to problem solve necessarily. But as a designer, you have to problem solve. It really is what, what kind of defines design, whether you're an engineer or a graphic designer. Um, and it's kind of bringing a sense of, of economy to things and kind of trying to find the best ways of doing things um, and being interested in the construction of things. And so it really kind of helped refocus me on it's okay to be a graphic designer and it is of use to people and what you've got to talk to people about is that usefulness. It's not just because I was at the stage at the start of the year that I was thinking that maybe we had to talk to them about, maybe we had to be looking at getting some people in who would kind of do some research or something or maybe we had to be going that way. But I think there's actually a, a real world need for graphic design. Um, so that's good. So what, so what next? I mean, obviously I feel a lot better, which is great. Um, and I think there's a kind of new, we've got a new ambition. Um, and I really struggled with, I wrote this really late last Friday night and then for the last week I've been going, what did it mean again? Um, but I think what it means is, um, hold on, I've got some notes here because I had to write down this morning. Um, you wouldn't necessarily put these two things together, creativity and responsibility, or certainly I would have, as you saw, the last ambition was pure creativity. All we wanted to do was get out there and create, but as we started on that path, we found that it was easy if you were just wanted to be creative for it to be used in ways that you weren't necessarily comfortable with. Um, and then all of a sudden, your creativity, which you think is good for the world, is actually being used as a gimmick. And that didn't feel very good. And we kind of, but you know, surely we have to make money as graphic designers. And so there was lots of questions about that. Um, but yeah, you wouldn't necessarily put these two things together. But um, when I looked at the project, those last projects that kind of made sense to me, that's what I found, creativity and responsibility. And then, the, the AAD in our name stars, stands for art and design. And, you know, we were never, I'm ne I was never a pure rational functionalist, and I was never a absolute formal kind of playfulness. I really do believe that the two parts should work together, you know, the rational problem-solving elements of design and the kind of um, engaging elements of art can combine to, to create great things. Um, so that, that's kind of what this is about, creativity and responsibility. It's problem solving, it's actually being responsible to the people you're working for. It's not just trying to kind of force your, your creative vision on what they do. And I mean, this isn't about, we all have to go off now and be an eco designer. I still want to make money doing what I do. I still want to, I want to help business clients, but I want to help business clients that I think are, are doing good things. Um, but I want to be responsible. You know, if I'm doing an, uh, an art book, then the art has to be the thing that we're selling. It's not about kind of doing things that cover up the art because we're graphic designers and we're being expressive. Um, it's about being responsible for what you do. And I think as a, as a kind of bigger discussion, it, it makes sense that I think a lot of kind of business people see graphic designers as just kind of the wacky guys that they, it, it makes sense to me that they would just buy some ideas to apply to a campaign as opposed to, because a lot of the time we, we kind of say, no, well, we don't want the responsibility, we just want to have fun and be creative. But I think if we, if we ask for the responsibility and if it's given to us, 
I think we can do much better things. And I think the, the business community would start to see the value of what, what it is we do and, and see that, oh, actually, this is a really useful tool for me and I can see how, how it would help. Um, and I think what's really exciting about that then is, and what we found with, the, with, the, with some of our clients is, um, if you build a responsible relationship with them and if they give you responsibility, then you actually do much better work and you can bring them to places that they would never usually go, you know? Over at a restaurant, this has to be like a real crap stock, but it has to be laminated so it can be wiped clean, you know, blah, blah, blah. Because we'd, we'd kind of brought them to a different place, they were more excited about what we could bring to it in terms of ideas. So I really think that the two of them um, feed off each other. Um, and just like that, to be honest, you know, I've been all week trying to work out what that meant, and I think, I hope I kind of nailed it there, but um, it was only this morning I was out, I got a dog a couple of years ago, and uh, I talk about the dog too much, and this is going to be the last time I talk about the dog, but I thought it was very important because um, it kind of, as I was out this morning walking the dog and trying to get my head around this for the last time before I came and did this, it, something clicked, and as it does a lot with the dog, it's kind of, he's like a little zen, she's like a little zen thing that runs around and kind of explains mysteries in your mind. Um, but the thing about dogs that we found out this year is um, dogs have to work to be happy. And what that means is if you've got a retriever, you bring it out, you throw the ball, the retriever retrieves it, the retriever is happy. If you don't throw the ball for the retriever, the retriever is unhappy because it doesn't feel like it's bringing any, any usefulness into the world. We've got a beagle. Its job is to sniff and run. So we bring her to the park. And after I realized she wasn't going to bring the ball back, and after I got comfortable with the fact that she wasn't going to run away, we just leave her sniff and run, and she's happy. And if she doesn't get a walk for a day, she isn't happy. She, doesn't, she needs to be out there doing her job, sniffing and running. And I think that's what it comes down to. Um, I, think, um, I think the dog explained it all. Um, it's not just about creativity. I think it's about creativity and something else. Um, I think it's about finding out what role you want creativity to play. And it's about finding that out, and it's about doing that for the rest of your life and making a difference with it. So that's kind of where I got to. So I hope it all makes sense. And uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> Have we got time? Yeah. Um, Brem was just saying we've got some time. If anybody's got any questions or anything, just put your hands up if you want to ask anything. Put your hands up. Where the toilet is. Uh. <laughs> anything like that, yeah. Anybody? Anyone? Bueller? <laughs> oh, somebody up the back there, Brent. Yeah. First question of offset. Hi, um, you said, you know, for a while you were the t-shirt guys, and they were great t-shirts. Yeah, thanks. Um, and you said you hated it because you're not the t-shirt guys. Should you not, there's an argument for it, should you not accept that people love that you do that and maybe accept that you're the t-shirt guys? Or um, should you fight against every label you're given? No, I think that's a great question. I think what ultimately what it comes down to is when we started Angry, we were interested in, and I guess it comes back to the, where we were at the end, we, we didn't we weren't just starting t-shirts just to kind of make t-shirts. We really wanted to see how a brand worked and we wanted to see how a, how a business, you know, how that would go out in the world. So the thing about Ang Angry is it actually had uh, a kind of brand center which was bold yet polite. So there was a real, there was a drive and focus with everything we were trying to do. It was also about trying to put stuff out there that wasn't, you know, you either got your porn star t-shirts on one side or you got your, this was kind of seven years ago, or you got your kind of Armani fancy little t-shirts on the other side. So it was actually about trying to put something out there that kind of uh, young professionals could maybe wear into a meeting or something, and we'd, we'd design sweatshirts that would look more kind of um, stylish and, and stuff like that. So there was a real ethos behind it. But then what started happening was people got into that gimmick thing where people weren't interested in, in necessarily what the T-shirt meant for their brand or what, what else we could bring with that T-shirt. They were, they were more just interested in, uh, these guys are cool, and they were in a couple of magazines, and a t-shirt, surely that's what all the kids want. And so we'd love to get into meetings and we'd be like, well, we can do other things. And if you give us a chance, we can kind of really uh, brainstorm this out and come up with some great ideas that are really meaningful. No, no, just a t-shirt's good. 
So that's, that's kind of, it's not that we're fighting against being the t-shirt guys, it's more that there's a bigger sense of responsibility that we'd like to be involved with rather than just being the gimmicky t-shirt guys. Because to be honest, I can't actually design t-shirts that way because I'm like, what, what the hell is this about? I don't know. Um, I've got nothing to judge the kind of relevance or, or how successful it is, so it's just very difficult. Good question though, thanks. Anybody else? No? Okie doke. Thanks very much, Scott. Well, thanks very much. Have a good weekend.